Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vips from Slidener here. It's been some time since I talked about Android. Ah, uh, I'm back after a brief period of being ill, thanks to the heavy rains. But finally, we are gonna talk about how we can work stuff with the keyboard in Android. Now, whenever I'm trying to make something in Android, one of the biggest things that really pisses me off is the edit text that you have in Android. And that's because of that stupid keyboard which keeps popping up and doesn't let me allow or control it in a different place. So here on my slidener.com website, I already have a nice article that talks about what are the different things that you can do with the keyboard and how you can play with it. So I have talked about input types over here. Then I have talked about how you can control the buttons that appear inside your keyboard. Like for example, this last button, which is send or done. And then I've talked about the editor action listener. Now I'm going to implement the same stuff which I've discussed in this complete article in the current video. For any reference, I'll be including the link to this article in my description text in the video. So be sure to check the article out before you proceed and see this video. So let's get started first. So I have an edit text right now. If I start entering something over here on the screen, if you guys notice the keyboard pops up and what I see is these different characters that has the entire stuff over here. Now, how can I customize the layout of this keyboard? So going back to our activities layout file here in the edit text what I can do is use a special attribute called input type so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna say input type now it has several values let me show you some simple ones for example if you want only numbers you could probably say something like input type equals number something like that let's run this and find out how that works. so now when you run the app and when you start the keyboard take a look at that the keyboard is completely changed there are only digits and there's a decimal point with some other characters same way there are several values out there that are available for the android input type and these values change with the versions of android so going here if i want something like say date time i could probably have date time over here let me run this again and show you what happened so this time if you guys notice here there's the same numbers but there's this weird character that has come up over here which is basically a slash and a colon for date and time. So as you guys notice, the keyboard can be customized using the input type attribute. And I will leave that to you guys to play with the different values of input type to figure out the different attributes because there's a lot of attributes and they keep changing again and again. So I don't want to talk about them. So next thing that we are going to talk about is this button over here. If you go back here, there's this button which says done over here. Can we change that button to something else? And can we receive events from over here? Let's say if I enter one, two, three over here in the keyboard from through my keyboard and then I click done over here. What I want is that number to disappear and this input to get registered or something like that. So how do we do that? Well, to control what appears in the button, there's another attribute called IME options over here. If you go see Android IME options, you can have a lot of options over here. Take a look, there's action unspecified, action search, action send, and there are some many other buttons just like I said. Now, one of the most popular ones that you guys are going to be using is something called action done. Now, let me show you first. If I put action send over here, let me run the app and show you what happens right now. So as soon as our app starts running and the keyboard pops open, you guys notice that there's a send button over here in place of the done button that we had. So in this way, you can customize what kind of action you want to listen for. Now, in my case, let's say I want to have an action done over here. So I'm going to put action done. And for the input, I'm going to have number. No, wait a second. Let me just keep it normal over here. Text cap words. So every word is going to be capitalized when I say text cap words. So going back to my test IMF. Now, when the user hits that done button, I want to be I want to be told that the user has done so and so. So how do I do that? Very simple. I go here and I simply say edit text dot set on editor action listener. Now this is a listener which will listen for events on that button on the keyboard. So go here and you can say this over here which means make your activity implement the on editor action listener. So Go here, let test IMF implement on editor action listener. Do that. Of course, you'll have to overwrite some methods. Let's implement them. And one of the methods that we have, and in fact, the only method that we have is on editor action, which is three parameters. The first parameter, text view, is the name of the view that was clicked where you guys had the keyboard popping up. Second parameter that you have is the action ID. Now we will take a look at what this ID is. The third parameter, key event, 
is null for all other cases except when you hit the enter key so what we are gonna do here we're gonna compare if we hit the done button or not how do we do that if you go here if you say if action ID now there is this class called editor info which has our IME actions over here if you guys notice there is editor info dot IME action done go next and all the things so you can compare your current action ID so let's say if the action ID is action done then what we want to do in our case currently is to simply display a text over toast over here that represents a simple message also if you have successfully handled the action then you should return true from here otherwise you should return false so in our case if the action is done in our case we are going to return true over here oops sorry about that otherwise in all other cases what we simply return is false for other action IDs now that that is done over here let's take a look go up above over here let's run this app and figure out if our on editor action gets called or not so now I have a keyboard which I'm gonna pop up by clicking on the edit text and I'm gonna say Sam over here as you guys notice I use the input type text cap words which means every single word is gonna be capital automatically so let's say I've said Sam Sam over here let's click done over here and as soon as you do that you notice the toast here which says you click the done button so in that case there are three parameters that are passed the first parameter is the edit text itself which was clicked the second parameter is the action ID which is nothing but action done in our case which is why this condition is satisfied which says action ID equals equals IME action done the third parameter doesn't matter in our case and this code runs over here and return true here to indicate that we have successfully handled the user clicking the done button otherwise we return false and that is that so this was a simple example to show you guys how you can use your IME options and input type attribute to customize stuff for more details be sure to read the article in the description links below over there in the meantime have a nice day I'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching